Rail fans, and welcome back to another Will It Run video on the I Saw It Online YouTube channel. Here back with Trains with Shane. Hopefully back to a somewhat regularly scheduled program again. <clears throat> I'm uh, sorry the uploads haven't been normal the last few weeks, guys. Um, for those of you who didn't watch a couple of videos back and read the video description, um, we had to have, honestly, my favorite dog ever in the whole universe put down after some complications from a, a surgery she had. And um, it hit me pretty hard. And um, I, my heart just was not into anything. It's, um, it's still tough. But things are getting a little bit more back to normal. Life still isn't hundred percent great just yet um, one of my uncles is in the hospital now um, he's real sick and uh, things are looking good there um, on the plus side I had a birthday which is today as I'm recording this as a matter of fact um, it was a pretty decent day um, my girlfriend took me out for dinner and uh, spent some time did some shopping with my mom and um, it was pretty good and the weather was supposed to be bad all day but the rain stayed away so it was it was pretty good so I'm, uh, I'm thankful for that and I'm still here and uh, so is Chris if you guys have seen he's uh, done some O gauge things but um, yeah I need to just get back into my routine really it's just been work sleep repeat for the last couple of weeks um, over the last few days I've been trying to find another puppy and I can't believe how hard it is to give someone money people supposedly are selling Shih Tzu puppies all over the place I can't get a hold of any of them people want to jerk you around and this and that it's like I just want I want to go to someone give them money bring home puppy it, it shouldn't be that hard but you know, whatever. So, what have we got on the disgusting workbench today? We've got an Atlas, as you can see, N scale. This is a Dash 8 40C, a regular cab in Kansas City Southern, Southern Bell colors. As you can see, it's not the wide cab. Um, this thing should have Loke Sound installed. Um, I picked this up off of eBay. Oh man, I want to guess about six weeks ago now, and as I said, I've just not not had the time, not had the drive more than the time really. But just here we are. So, what do we got? Let's see. Let's get the bubble wrap off of here. It's probably the newest Atlas locomotive that I own. Get this out of here carefully. Nice sturdy box, very reminiscent of Kato, um, except it's got the um, the tabs that secure the lid instead of a, a friction fit. All right, look at this guy. Get our little foam pieces out of here. Get the Rick's pick down here to help. All right. Not a bad looking unit. Surprisingly light. I expected it to be a little heavier. All right, where do we begin? I guess at the business end here. Get you guys zoomed in. We'll go for a tour. All right, looks like we've got Separately applied hoses, a coupler cut lever. Got a closed pilot with a plow. Atlas magnetic coupler. I um, think maybe they're using the Accumate. Let's see. Like it says on the back. Coupler is made in China under license from Accurail. Okay, so they are Accumate couplers. Cool. 
Well, looks like we've got a separately applied, where's my pick here? Separately applied brake lever. Um, let's see if we can get in and we can read that that says GE on the builder plate. That's pretty cool. There's our front designation. Road number here is 3493. Not very easy to see, um, given that we've got red letters and the red stripe that goes through there. Um, it's probably that way on the prototypes, if I were to guess. But uh, back up here on the front, yeah, we've got the narrow cab, not the wide cab, the CW. Is that some stuff on there? It is. A little dusty. Um, we've got our light package. Road number 3493 up in the number boards here. Um, it doesn't look like we have any separately applied grab irons or anything. No separately applied sand filler hatches. Looks like they're molded in. Got our PTC antennas molded in. Some molded in detail for trap doors. Looks like the um, the exhaust stack here is a separately applied piece. Separately applied horn painted to match the top of the cab here, top of the roof. Top of the radiator grill detail is it's kind of weak in my opinion. I think it should be a little bit deeper. Um, that could probably stand some weathering to bring that out. Same with the grills here on the sides. They're, they look fairly fairly shallow and I think a, a little bit of uh, filthying it up with a, with a weathering pigment or maybe a wash or a dry brush or something would help really deepen that up. Same with the rest of the grills. This one here. Um, is that, do these units have dynamic brakes and is that what that is? I'm used to looking at EMD units that would have fans on top, so I don't know, guys. You tell me in the comments. Um, down here we have some gas tank detail. Get in back in frame with my pick here. Um, got a fuel level filler. Um, looks like I don't know. Are those molded into the? Yeah, they are. Yep, those are molded. The air tanks are molded into the side. Um, Okay-ish detail on the truck sides. Um, looks like we might have spare mounts for couplers right here, coupler knuckles. Um, or maybe some extra details that might be in the bag that's with this thing. We'll check that out in a minute. Um, around the back, more of the same. We've got our MU hoses and airlines and separate coupler cut lever our magnetic coupler rear light package number boards if i were to guess i would say yeah it looks like the rear number boards are opaque although they may light up we'll find out here in just a minute um overall um it's decent it's um I mean, I don't know. It, uh, I guess it's about on par with uh, the amount of detail you'd get in a Kato locomotive these days. Um, so, as we do, let's get this over onto the switching layout, hook it up to DCC power, and find out what it does and what it doesn't do. I will see you guys over there. All right, guys, we are over on the switching layout. We are hooked up, as is the custom, with my uh, DCC++ EX build. And, guys, I promise one of these days I'm going to put a video together on that. Just bear with me. All right, so... Connected. Um, track power is on. Let me get a locomotive number put in here. Let's see, let's try three for starters. 
Okay, let's see. We do have a headlight. So it looks like three is our is our number here. Let's see if I can get you guys zoomed in to where you can actually see it. Let me get my position right here. Man, guys, things are hard. All right, well, we got a headlight off and on. Is it just me or does it look like it got dimmer and brighter? Yep, it gets dim and bright as I change direction. All right, let's see if we can find, what is it, F8? I don't hear any sounds yet. Let's try F9. No sounds yet. Let's dial up some uh, some direction and see what happens if it moves. No. No movement. What is the deal here, guys? Let me try cycling track power here. That is track power off, right? Okay, we've got track power. It's responding to F0, turning the headlight off and on, but no, uh, no movement that I can see. I mean, I don't guess it would respond, um to the headlight command and be on the wrong number. I mean, it should be three, right? Well, just in case it isn't, let's set it to the road number, 3493. Let's see here, 93. All right, 3493 is put in here. And no response from anything. So let's go back to three, the default. Well, we've got our headlight and nothing else. Hmm. What say you guys? Can we, I mean, we shouldn't be dealing with dirty tracks. Switch apps. Stand by.
Okay, we're using low control now. Enter in our locomotive number here. Three, confirm. Select. Says it's connected. Headlights coming on and off. Still nothing when we dial up forward or reverse power. Hmm. Okay. Well, give me a minute, guys. Let me get reset. Um, I am going to reboot my uh, DCC setup here. And if I don't get anything different, I'll break out the NC power cap. I'll be right back. All right, guys, have the power cab hooked up. Same behavior. Uh, headlight, nothing else. So let me re-familiarize myself. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. Go to program. See, use program track, enter. Nothing else is on this. Um, one for standard. Can't read the decoder. Cannot read CV. Let's try it again. Let's... Hmm. Looks like it's having trouble communicating. Uh, let me go back and dig up some information, make sure I'm even doing this right, guys. I'll be back in a little bit. All right, guys, we are back. I was doing it right. Um, it can't read the decoder. So looks like we may actually have a bad one, which is honestly, it's a first for me. So... Um, I'm going to get in touch with the guy I bought this from and uh, see what he's going to do about it. This was actually sold to me as new from a very large seller on eBay. So let's see what happens. I will bring you guys back when I find out what we find out. All right, guys, we are back over on the disgusting workbench. Everything is packaged up. I have shot an email over to the seller and uh, we'll see what they uh, respond with. Um, and I will update you guys hopefully in a few days, maybe next week's video. Um, normally I would wait and um, wait till the seller responds and everything but I really want to get this video put out so and it may take a few days anyway 
Um, normally, I would take this sucker apart and troubleshoot it myself, but it's one of the few brand new locomotives I've purchased, and uh, I spent quite a bit of money on it. Not huge, but, you know, more than a little. So, um, let's see how the uh, RMA and or replacement or how that goes. So, with that guys, I want to thank you for watching. Stay safe, and I will catch you on the next one.